Hello, I'm Fast Lawyer and with Oculus Rift Reviews. Today we're going to review and play Titans of Space Plus, a game on, I believe it's on every platform, a mobile, Oculus Store, Steam, for the HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, Windows Mixed Reality, Valve Index. And I actually bought this game back in 2017 from the Oculus Store for four bucks, but I received a free Steam key through the Steam Creator Connect program to review this game. So this is basically just an extra copy that I got so that I could do a review on Steam. And that's the only reason I accepted this key. I already had the game. So I noticed zero differences between this and the Oculus Store version. You know, they both run on the Oculus SDK. And Titans of Space was already one of my favorite space programs. Now the game is still in early access and it normally retails for 10 bucks. But I do strongly recommend this game because there is just so much educational information here that's done in a insightful yet still entertaining way. I always wanted to know more about each planet, about each moon. Uh, when I did the tour. Now there are two tours. There's basically a short tour. I, I believe it's 15 minutes long if I'm not mistaken. And then there's a longer 25 minute tour. However, even if you do those tours, there's still so much extra content that'll take you much, much longer. In fact, there is a voice narrator, uh, a tour guide, AKA the Flying Professor Alien, that will give you very insightful, very entertaining, useful information about the planets and about some of the moons and I just loved every minute of it and there is 90 minutes of this audio content and I hope they add more by the time of full release that should be coming out soon but there's more to do than just that you can fly around Superman style and get a closer view you can grab items you can zoom in and you can see the differences uh, you know between earth and the sun or whatever two celestial objects that you want and there's just so many tools here that you can use I'm gonna shut up now so you can hear some of the narrated portion so here we have Ceres this is the first dwarf planet that we'll visit on our journey and it is the largest asteroid in our solar system Ceres is named for the Roman goddess of agriculture and most of its surface features have names that are derived from the themes of harvests, fertile lands, and gods and spirits relating to such things. The symbol for Ceres looks like a scythe, like the kind you would use to cut your fields. The word cereal, you know, the kind that you eat, is based on Ceres. Out of all the hundreds of thousands of asteroids that we've discovered so far, this was the first one to be discovered in 1801. In fact, it's the first minor planet to be discovered, so its official name is One Ceres. Minor planets are basically any solar system body that isn't a planet or a moon. And then this is the only asteroid to be classified as a dwarf planet because it is the only one to be in hydrostatic equilibrium, which simply means that it's massive enough to be able to pull itself into a roughly spherical shape. So for a very good long time, the only picture we had of Ceres was a blurry one put together by the Hubble Space Telescope in orbit around Earth which revealed a small ball with a very curious bright spot. And then finally, very recently, we were able to explore Ceres up close from 2015 through 2018, when the NASA spacecraft named Dawn approached and entered orbit. Dawn had used its ion engines to first explore Vesta, the third largest asteroid we know of. And then it moved on to Ceres, where it now slings around in an uncontrolled orbit for at least, say, the next 20 years or so. The spacecraft was able to shift orbit several times and get really close. 
at one point coming within 35 kilometers of the surface. So it is no wonder that we now have stunningly gorgeous photos of Ceres with about 1,000 times better resolution than what Hubble was able to capture. And now we have great shots of those bright spots, which can be found in the floor of Oak Katoa Crater right here. So what are those bright spots then? Well, unfortunately, they are not alien city lights, as many were hoping. After some study of the massive amount of data collected from the Dawn mission, researchers have determined that the bright material is made of sodium carbonate. In other words, washing soda or soda crystals. We already use this stuff on Earth to make glass, paper, washing detergent, and so on. It's basically salt plus limestone. And several lines of evidence point to a very recent episode of cryovolcanisms in a low density region below this crater, pushing the material up onto the surface. And so now that bright spot in the center of the crater is named Cerealia facula. Even better than identifying the bright spots though, is that researchers have discovered that Ceres used to have a very significant subsurface ocean liquid water, some of which may still be there. By now though, most of that water is now either frozen solid or locked up in the surface crust as ice, clays, and hydrated minerals. We've even seen that Ceres occasionally emits water vapor, which is something that comets do, not asteroids. And so the line between comets and asteroids becomes a bit blurry. Ceres is only tilted at 4 degrees relative to its orbit around the Sun. So just like our Moon and Mercury, there are areas of the poles that never see sunlight and thus they act as cold traps for that water vapor to fall in and accumulate as water ice. This is the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system. The next one we see will be much further out, beyond the major planets. But for now, let's go get a closer look at the elephant in the room, Jupiter. Yes, that was a lot of information about theories. <laughs> Can you imagine the information on the planets themselves on Jupiter? It's just mind boggling. And I loved all that information about theories. It just really got me excited. Hello there. Not just about this theories, but I'm talking about every planet where I just had to sit and listen to the narrative portion of every planet just because it was so entertaining. And I loved it. I hope more is added because I'd love to know about other moons, other stars, you know, because there is not an aerated portion for everything on the tour. And I would love to see at least some audio for, for everything on the tour, at least all the major stuff. Uh, but the planets and some of the moons do have the narrated portions. Uh, but there's more you can do. You could rotate. And I show that a little bit later on. Now, the graphics for me are good. Are they the best graphics in VR? No, but I think they serve their purpose. And coupled with the 2D photos, I think it makes for a great space experience. Uh, so, you, so you can get the latest up-to-date information on our solar system. And I'm sure you'll learn something new unless you're a cosmologist already is this the best space VR app uh, that's a tough call there's some there's quite a few that are really good uh, discovering space 2 is one of my favorites there is also overview universe sandbox space engine there's just so many good space VR apps it's hard for me to pick a favorite all I can say is this one is definitely up there 
and I really enjoyed it, especially the narrated portions. I love the tour. I love seeing the planets. Uh, I love how they improve this game and have been constantly updating it. So I do recommend it and I'll give this game an 8 out of 10. I'm Fast Lawyer. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.